morning everyone welcome back to the channel welcome to a new day it is tuesday morning and it's uh 7 49 in the morning yep i am ready to bake this morning <laughs> so this is what i was going to make yesterday but never got around to it so this is an apple crisp bread so i'm using my loaf pan and i've already gone ahead and i sprayed um non-stick to the bottom and then I lined it with parchment paper so the parchment paper stays down so I did that already and I'm using the three apples that we received from the pantry last uh, Thursday and yeah I just wanted to make something with it before they go to waste so so yeah I was just looking around YouTube typed in apple uh, recipes and I uh, came across this one. I've never made an apple crisp bread before. So this comes from the YouTube channel, Laura in the Kitchen. So this is her recipe. So let me show you what we got going on here. All right, let me, uh, there's gonna be three different uh, mixtures, the batter, the apple mix and the topping. Well, actually four because I'm going to put icing on it. So let me show you what's going to go in the batter. Okay, so in the batter, we've got one stick, which is half a cup of softened butter. And then we got half a cup of granulated sugar. We got one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. We have two eggs. We have a half a cup of milk. Then we have two teaspoons of vanilla, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. So that's going to be the batter itself. And then I'll show you the apple mix. So I'm going to use all three apples just to get them used up. So I'm going to use three apples. I have no idea what kind they are. So <laughs> hopefully they taste good. I'm going to use... Uh, teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a third cup of brown sugar and that's going to be that mix so when I'm done making the batter I'll quick make the topping which will be four tablespoons of brown sugar and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon so all right but first we're gonna get started I'm gonna go ahead and peel and chop up these onions so I can get that mixture going and get them put aside so let me get ready to do that Okay, so I've got my apples all cut up, all three apples, and put my brown sugar in there, and a teaspoon of cinnamon. Doesn't have to be exact measurements, as you know. You want more brown sugar or cinnamon, put it in there. So I got up, uh, <laughs> well, the, I, I should say the fur babies got me up, but I was kind of waking up already. It was about 6.30, and I took Gypsy outside, and it uh, wasn't even quite light out yet. Came back in. I could have uh, went back to bed and slept for a while, but I thought, well, I'm feeling wide awake, so stay up, make your dessert and uh, get started on uh, continuing your kitchen projects so I can get done early. That way when it's time to make supper, I'm not in a time crunch or anything. Not that I am anyway. I don't feel like I'm in a time crunch. All right, so there is our apple mixture. We're gonna go ahead and put that to the side. And I'm going to get a bowl and we're going to get started on the batter. All right, so we're going to start off with mixing the butter, which I already have in there, and the sugar. So I got my half a cup of brown sugar. And we're going to go ahead and mix that together. Okay, so I've got that creamed together. Now I'm going to add my two eggs and my two table or two teaspoons of vanilla. I'm going to 
mix that together. Okay, so the last is I'm going to add in the milk. So half a cup of milk. And what I did with the flour is I went ahead and mixed the flour, the salt, and the baking powder together. So that's all in there. So I'm going to add that. And I'm going to mix it, starting off with the mixture, but it's going to get really thick. So then I'll do it by hand. Okay, so you can see how thick the batter is. It's supposed to be that thick. I'm just uh, mixing in all the flour and stuff from the sides of the bowl. Okay, so now we're going to uh, put our batter in, but we're only going to put half in right now because we're going to do two layers of this. We're just going to spread that out. And I left parchment paper over the side so I, it's easier to pull it out. Okay, so you can see I've got half of the batter in there. And now I'm going to put half of the apple mixture in there. And you can like squish them down into the batter a little bit. All right, so that's the first layer. And now I'm going to put the rest of the batter in there. Okay, so you see I have both layers down here, and now I'm going to make the topping, which is four tablespoons of brown sugar and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. So I'm just going to mix that all together. All right, and now we're going to spread this over the top of our cake, our bread here. I'm just going to... Do it by hand <laughs> before I end up putting the whole thing in one spot. All right, so just got it all covered up. All right, so there we go. That's all there is to it. And the only other thing to make is the icing that will go on top of it after it's done and cooled off. So I'm going to put this in the oven, again, 350 degrees, and it's going to bake for anywhere from 50 to 50 minutes to an hour. And about, I'm going to set the timer for about 25 minutes. If it's getting too dark, then I'm going to cover it with tin foil so it doesn't get so dark. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and get that in the oven. All right, everyone. So I'm taking my apple scraps and I'm just going to put them outside for the critters out there. It's getting colder outside, so the abundance of food for them is going to get uh, slimmer and slimmer. So I'm just going to put my skins and just all my apple scraps outside for them. So, yeah.
If you have scraps, don't forget your uh, friendly critters outside this winter. All right, everyone. So it has been exactly 50 minutes and it is done. I put a, a toothpick through a couple places, came out completely dry. So it smells so good. So in a little while, when it cools off, I'm going to make a icing for it and drizzle that all over the top. And I can't wait to taste this thing. So now it's garbage day. So I'm going to head outside to do or get some garbage out there. Can you believe it's been a week since we've taken the walk to Evergreen Park? Oh, and in that week, the weather has changed so much. It has been so cold in the mornings that it's too cold for Glenn to go out. So I think we're going to have a couple 58 degree days um, between now and next week. So we might pick a day and head, head back on over because the fall colors in that park is amazing. So I'm hoping to catch that as well as a fall drive before the month is over. So, all right, I'm going to let this cool off, get some uh, garbage outside, and get started with other things in the house. All right, everyone, so the bread has been uh, cooling off for a while, but I am so anxious to get in there and have some. So, <laughs> it's 1049 right now. I have no idea what time the loaf got done. But afterwards, I went and I took garbage out, uh, kind of cleaned up the hallway a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I haven't done anything now since. <laughs> I didn't even do my uh, kitchen cleanup, my dishes, so I have to do that next. But what I think I'm going to do is, after I get my uh, dishes washed up, I think I'm going to start cutting the potatoes, the onions, and the carrots for supper already. Um, I can always just let the potatoes and carrots sit in a bowl of water in the refrigerator and then cut the onions. That way it's all ready. And then when it's time to cook them, I just got to drain the water out and such. So I think I might do that. Just kind of prepare for supper a little bit more. Um, that way I can uh, grill out the ribeye early because it gets dark earlier now. So I want to give it enough light to uh, grill. All right, so I'm going to make the icing for this uh, apple crisp now. Apple crisp bread, that's what it is. All right, yeah, it's it smells so good. It's, it's a great fall dessert. <laughs> that's all I can say. All right, I'm not going to measure anything. I'm just going to put some stuff in here. All I'm using is powdered sugar and milk. And I want to make it a little thicker, so I'm going to put less milk in. So, and I'm just using this milk we get from the pantry. It's 1% low-fat milk. Um, I usually would buy whole milk, but we're using what we get from the pantry. So, and it works fine. I'm throwing powdered sugar everywhere here. All right, I'm going to make it a little thicker, not much. Or a little thinner. Because what I think I'm going to do is put it into a, a Ziploc bag and pipe it all over the loaf instead of just trying to... Uh, dump it like this because it is pretty thick and that's the way I want it but I think I'm going to make more because there's not that much there Okay, so I have the consistency I think I want. <laughs> so I'm going to put it in this plastic bag, this Ziploc bag. But first I'm going to put the bag, just to make it easy to pour the icing into the bag, I'm going to put it in a cup um, or a glass. And then you want to just 
wrap this down the lip. That way it's a little easier to get the icing in there. I've got it in there and I can just take my bag out and just cut one of the corners just exactly the same way as I do when I do the sour cream when I make tacos and now I can just cut a corner and squeeze it out. The only bad thing is this is not one of those bags that are flat on the bottom, so the cut's not going to come out that great. I guess it doesn't matter as long as the icing gets on the bread. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to put, I'm going to take the bread out of the pan. And that's why I uh, made the parchment paper over the sides. Oh, that looks so good. All right, so I'm just going to Squeeze this uh, icing out. It's probably going to come up at uh, come out as a double, like a fork, <laughs> because there's a, a funny cut at the bottom. Uh, it's not too bad. Oh, there goes the second hole. <laughs> and that's the consistency I want the icing so it's a more uh, thicker icing it doesn't turn to a translucent color all right everyone so there is the icing on this apple crisp uh, bread so I'm just going to wait for that icing to dry up and I'm digging in so I will let you know how it tastes so yeah, I'll be back when I cut it up. All right, guys, what do you think? Is it time to cut cut into this thing? I think so too. That's why I got the knife here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut an edge piece off here. Uh, the icing is not completely dried, but I really can't wait anymore. You can see some apples there. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Let's uh let's take a fork full of this thing. See what it tastes like. I want to get the apples in there. See how uh soft they are. Not bad at all. It's a it's a dense bread, so it's not like light and fluffy. But it's not bad at all. Yeah, it's pretty good actually. Oh, yeah. There's a nice cool fall day dessert snack whatever you want to call it but i'm gonna have me a piece i'm gonna call glenn see if he wants some with some coffee but we actually haven't eaten anything today so um he's got a little bit of a stomach ache today so i'm gonna see if he just wants some soup or something but yeah definitely uh the first time i made anything like this i like it it's just something good glenn could have with his uh coffee the apples are soft, and the cinnamon doesn't overwhelm the taste. 
I'm not sure how further into it you get it if it will or not, but as of right now, it doesn't overwhelm the taste because Glen is not a great, not a big cinnamon fan. Um, but so so far, I don't see that the cinnamon is overwhelming. So yeah, that is that is apple crisp bread with icing on it. So that is also a good way to use your, uh, if, if you get apples from the food pantry and with a few home staple items like flour, sugar, brown sugar, all that good stuff, you get apples, you can make a good dessert like this, apple pie, whatever, but this just took the basic home staples, sugar, brown sugar, flour, egg, milk, you know, vanilla, basic things that you would have in your kitchen, hopefully. Um, and then if you get apples from the pantry, there you go. That's all I did. So I used all three of them. Now they didn't get wasted. And now we have a nice, good tasting dessert. So everything homemade. All right. So yeah, I'm going to figure out lunch now and get to cleaning up some dishes. All right, everyone, so um, Glenn's going to try this Campbell's Chunky Spicy Chicken Noodle Soup. We got this at the pantry, so he's going to try that for lunch. And I think I'm just going to do some ramen uh, ramen noodles and, yeah, pretty, uh, yeah, light lunch. Not so heavy um, because we still have some of that bread to eat. So, <laughs> all right, so we're going to have a pretty heavy uh, supper, so we'll just go light on the lunch. All right, so here is Glenn's uh, spicy chicken noodle soup, and it looks a little red to me. <laughs> so uh, hopefully it's spicy enough for him, but not too spicy. I'm also taking Glenn a little piece of that uh, apple crisp bread. Uh, you can see the icing is nice and uh, uh, thick on there. So yeah, he wants to taste some. He'll probably have some in a little while with coffee. And then I'm also taking him some crackers for his soup. All right, everyone. So after I cut a little piece off for Glenn, look what came through. It looks so much nicer. Uh, a lot more apples coming through. This is uh, getting towards the middle, but not quite the middle. And that icing looks really nice on there. It tastes really good. Uh, the flavors really come out more the uh, closer to the middle you get. But yeah, it looks good. It tastes good. And I hope Glenn likes it. But if he doesn't, I guess that's more for me. So, <laughs> all right. So right now I'm making my lunch. I'm just having some ramen noodles. And then I get the, I got to get to cleaning. All right, everyone. So here is my lunch. So just some beef ramen noodles. And I'm going to sit down and uh, enjoy this and then get back to work. All right, everyone. So I have been uh, <laughs> trying to pre-prep uh, supper here. So I cut my potatoes, carrots, and onions, and those are ready to go. This is a casserole dish for that, and I'll put some butter, salt, and pepper in it. And then this with tin foils were my chicken tenders. I'm making chicken tenders for myself, and I'm going to coat them in cork flakes. So uh, this is to put a couple eggs in for the egg batter. I'll dip them in here, here, and they'll go in there. This is ready to go for when the steak is done on the grill so my chicken will go in the oven along with the potato carrot onion mix and then so all that's ready i'm just going to get the i'm going to start putting stuff in here so that's ready i got to drain the water out so yeah i've been uh trying to prep before i actually have to uh get going but it's almost five o'clock so i gotta get going i gotta go uh Get this going and then get the fryer started or the grill. So, all right. So that's what I've been doing. Okay. So this is ready to be put in the oven. I've got the oven preheating to 350 right now. And I've got, uh, this is a total of three potatoes, uh, some carrots and onions. These were all from the food pantry. And I put just pieces of butter all over and underneath salt and pepper. And I'm going to cover it. And that'll be ready to go in the oven. 
as soon as the oven is preheated. And now I'm going to get my chicken ready. That way I can just go start up the grill and just um, get that done as well. So, and I'm going to see if Glenn's ready to go in the trailer. He's been out there for a while. So, all right. So I'm going to cover this up and uh, keep moving. All right. So I am ready to get the chicken all ready to go in the oven. So I've got four tenderloins here. And that's what I'll be eating along with the potato carrot mix. Um, my hope is that we have some leftovers for tomorrow. I think we will because I don't think Glenn's going to eat that whole steak. Um, and I'm for sure not going to eat all four tenderloins today. So Now in my opinion, every time I do like the cornflake uh, mix... Um, Basically, all I do is put cornflakes in a bag and take a rolling pin and crush them up. So, all the other times I've done the cornflake uh, coating, I used melted butter. I put the chicken in the melted butter. And, in my opinion, I don't think the cornflakes stick that well when you do it that way. Just doing it with egg right now, the cornflakes all over it. So, I think I'll stick with egg instead of uh, melted butter and I originally was gonna do this in the air fryer but with having to grill out the steak outside um, I would have to be running in and out so so I'm just gonna throw them in the oven <laughs> and that's okay I like it that way too did I put this in the egg I have no idea <laughs> All right, so the egg is or the egg is ready to go. The oven is ready to go. So uh, let me tell you about the apple crisp bread. Um, I had a piece after I ate, ate my ramen noodles for lunch, and it, I thought it was really good. Um, my first thought after I really ate a, a more centerpiece is it would have been awesome. It would have been really good with some kind of a nut, like a pecan or a walnut. I think that would really uh, be good in there. And then I thought to myself, I bet Glenn's going to think that too. And sure enough, he did. Because uh, I took him that little piece and he said it would it'd be really good with uh, a walnut or something in it. So <laughs> do I know him or what? <laughs> so uh, he wasn't feeling the greatest today. So not everything was tasting really that good to him. Uh, he didn't really care for that soup. I don't know if it's just because he was not feeling well. Uh, he had a bit of an upset stomach today. He's been feeling good pretty much all summer. Um, but the last... This morning when I went out there, um, he hadn't been feeling good. So hopefully he feels good by supper so he can eat good. And we're not sure if we're going to the RC airfield tomorrow. He said if it's if it's like today, he probably won't go. Because um, he, he just gets frozen to the bone. Yesterday when he went in the trailer, after being out in the garage for a while, he couldn't even feel his fingers anymore. So that's just the way his body is nowadays. He just can't stand the cold, which is unfortunate. All right, put too much cornflake in here, so much left. But we have tons of cornflake, so I'm going to, um, while I'm doing this organizing, I'm going to crush up a bunch of cornflakes and put it in that food storage stuff, the containers, and label it as cornflake mix. All right. Yeah, this sticks on way better with the egg coating, or the egg batter. All right, so... There's my uh, chicken tenderloins. So those are ready to go in the oven. And I'm going to clean up this little bit. Get those in the... Actually, I'm going to put those in the oven right away. Clean up this little bit. Season up the steak. I'm going to go start up the grill. And I'll be back. Hey everyone, so I'm outside, the grill's on fire now, well, 
I got the fire going on the grill now. So I'm just waiting, waiting for that to go down and then I'll go grab the ribeye. I got Glenn in the trailer and he's set to go. So yeah, just got to cook the ribeye. And I'm so looking forward to this meal. I'm not eating the ribeye. Like I said, I'm not much of a steak person. I prefer chicken. I love chicken, and Glenn doesn't like chicken so much. He prefers steak, so. <laughs> um, but, yeah. But if we didn't get this at the pantry, we wouldn't be having a ribeye. We'd probably be both having chicken. <laughs> so, all right. So, yeah, it's actually not as cold as I thought it was out here. The real feel is 49 degrees. Um, but there's really no wind at all. If there was wind, it'd be much colder. But looks like it rained a little bit. Um... He's still not sure if he's going tomorrow to the RC field. And then starting Thursday, I think we're supposed to get like four or five days of rain and very high winds, like 20, over 20 mile per hour winds. So, uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, but just waiting for this fire. So, yeah, stay tuned. All right, everyone, so here are my chicken tenders. Uh, I've got Glenn his steak and his all his food, so he's eating right now. That steak is good, <laughs> and I think I cooked it perfect. It was not too rare, not too uh, well done. It was kind of medium rare, medium well, whatever. Had some red inside, and it was tender. So I'm just going to make sure my chicken is done. I need to get one of those digital thermometers. This thing is too slow. I'm just going to cut it open. All right, everyone. So here is my supper. Some cornflake coated chicken tenderloins and a potato, carrot, and onion mixture in the oven with some butter. So I think I might try to have some ranch dressing with that but that is our supper for this uh tuesday night all right so i think i'm going to end the video here you already saw what we're probably going to have for dessert tonight some of that apple crisp bread and i gotta tell you again it is good so all right so thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video i hope you enjoyed it and i truly appreciate all the support and with that, remember to live life, be good to yourself, and be good to others. Until next time.